Welcome everyone back to Weekly Weather Updates. And this evening we've got a different video in store where we're going to be doing a reanalysis of the 2020-2021 winter. I do a lot of forecasting and loads of other people do lots of long-range forecasting, short-range forecasting. But I think it's very important sometimes to look back on sort of the weather we've had to see whether patterns uh, and events that have occurred um, how they influence the atmosphere so in future we can learn how to uh, better forecast. So in this video I'm just going to be looking at the three months uh, of meteorological winter, so December, January, February, uh, just looking at what sort of pressure patterns we saw, uh, notable events we saw and how uh, what led up to that and what, uh, what came after that uh, so we can improve in the years to come. Do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you do like and subscribe as it really does help me out. But we're starting on the 1st of December and you can see Quite an amplified jet stream uh, with high pressure over the top of the country right now. We've got a bit of a northerly wind, but if you have a look at the upper air temperatures, as always with early December, uh, if we go right to the, if we go to the first December, as always with early December, there is not too much uh, cold air around. It's over Greenland, North Pole, but you can see towards Scandinavia, Siberia, there's not too much cold air around. So it's very difficult to get proper cold conditions right at the start of December. Remember, we haven't had it many times before where we've seen widespread, very cold conditions. But we do have an, uh, an amplified jet stream, and it's sort of showing the pattern for this winter. And you can see it does try and head up towards Greenland. And by early December, we see this sort of split where we see a look at sort of a lobe, a quite deep area of low pressure. And you could, somebody could even say that's a lobe of the polar vortex at 850 HPA dropping down over the top of the UK. But you can see there's not too much cold air associated with that. Um, you see the cold air isn't uh, particularly widespread over the North Pole at this stage. It's still really early on in the winter. The Atlantic is quite mild, so it does warm it up quite a lot. And what we do see is we see this really deep area of low pressure over the top of the UK. I think I, this, I remember this was a named storm. I can't remember the exact name, but it was a named storm for its wind. And then it did have snow associated with it. It was very much over higher ground and in localised spots. It was very, very marginal. But it did show us signs of what we were going to be seeing in, in the winter. And you can see that drop down, uh, uh, very bitterly cold uh, air coming down, at, at least at lower levels. Upper airs weren't as mild, but towards the surface, we've got three, four, five degrees quite widely, and then a few areas drop lower than that. So it did show uh, sort of a, uh, showed a bit of a hint of what we were going to see this winter with the amplification and blocking. Now, if we run through, you see that low pressure mills around, but that blocking that we did see up towards Greenland was very flimsy and didn't come off. And as we head through early December, you can see the trying, the atmosphere is trying to build up higher pressure towards Scandinavia and towards Greenland, but never really gets uh, going with that. And if we have a look at the upper air temperatures again, you can see it's around average upper air temperatures, nothing too mild, nothing too cold. And you can see the air to our east is quite mild with that. As we run through the pressure pattern, you see we actually go quite westerly. It is a southerly tracking jet stream. So if we have a look at the upper airs. Um, it's not very mild. It's not pulling up very, uh, very warm southwesterlies, but neither is it particularly cold. You can see there's not a lot of cold air to our north. So even when these lows do clear through, they don't really bring too much cold air with it. And if we go back to the pressure pattern, you can see we really just get dominated by low pressure through the middle part of December. And as we head towards Christmas, you see again, more low pressure around, high pressure trying to ridge up towards Scandinavia. There is some blocking towards the Arctic, but it never really comes off. And as we head towards uh, December, this was the first signs we could be seeing some very cold weather with high pressure ridging up towards Greenland. Some early forecasts actually saw this going as a Greenland high, dropping down some bitterly cold air, but that didn't come off in the end. And if we go back to the upper air temperatures, you can see very mild through the middle part of December. December started cold, ended cold, but the middle part of December meant December came out as pretty much an average month, really. But as you can see, that higher pressure starts to ridge up towards Greenland, and we start to pull cold air down. Probably the coldest air we brought, the first probably cold air we brought down um, through uh, early December. Where I am, I prob uh, pretty much officially got a white Christmas as I was up at about midnight and uh, looking out my window and there was a few snowflakes coming down with some uh, with some a few snow showers in the east but it didn't last too long with this uh, this area of high pressure and as you can see it 
topples very quickly and lower pressure moves back in. You can see this again, this pattern of this low pressure dropping through the country, similar to what we saw at the start of December. But in this scenario, the air is just a little bit colder. Again, it's not bitterly cold, but it's just a little bit colder. It's got quite a long uh, ocean track, so it does get uh, quite warm. And, I get, and again, I think, uh, and this uh, produced a, a lot of snow over higher ground, and again, some lowland areas or some snow. Again, um, it was quite localised, as it was, again, very marginal conditions. Um, so, and as we move through, you see that low hangs around, and we see this very amplified jet stream. And you'd expect, looking at this, for it to be quite cold. Um, but we don't really, uh, really see that. Um, as you can see, we do pull northerly winds in, but it's not bitterly cold. It's reasonably cold, cold enough for some wintry showers in places. But it's not bitterly cold. As you can see, the air to our north just isn't quite that cold. Some things this winter they just didn't quite align uh, at the right time to give us uh, give us those bitterly cold conditions. Whenever we saw we did, uh, whenever we did see some amplification in the jet stream. Uh, most often it was like this, where there wasn't a lot of cold air to our north, so we basically just pulled in the minus five line. And it got reasonably cold, overnight frost, a few snow showers, especially over higher ground. But for many lowland areas, we got these sort of, we got this is quite a few times where there was potential for cold weather, but never really came off. Um, so we ended up December really on an average month. Um, and now if we have a look at January, so we head through the first of January, we see we're pulling down northerly winds, um, which, yeah, reasonably cold, nothing too bitter. And then as we head towards early January, we do start to pull in uh, an easterly wind. Now, this easterly wind was <laughs> quite a frustrating easterly wind, I must say so. Um, because if you have a look at the air orange, it's actually coming back from more of the Mediterranean rather than Scandinavia. This high, high pressure doesn't quite get north enough and there's higher pressure over sort of eastern europe uh, bringing up some milder air so if we have a look at the upper airs you can see it's actually quite cold upper airs maybe minus seven minus eight but because the air is originating from mediterranean the dew points were too high uh, and it meant uh, many areas just saw very cold sort of two or three degree rain a few areas saw a bit of snow uh, but most areas uh, saw cold rain. So again, stars didn't quite align to give uh, a very cold weather in early January. And as you can see, this winter really had, did have the opportunities. And again, I've seen a lot of people say this was a teaser winter. As you can see certainly by these charts, how it did tease cold weather quite widely many times. It didn't quite come off until at least uh, that week in February, which we'll get to later in the video. But as we run through this uh, run, you can see high pressure maintains out the Atlantic. We maintain the sort of northeasterly flow, um, but nothing really too much comes to it. And then we go back into a more westerly phase. But you can see ever more high pressure trying to reach our north. And this was the time when we saw our sudden stratospheric warming. So it's going to be very interesting to see how it develops over the next few weeks with the sudden stratospheric warming, exactly where the blocking ends up. Um, as we head into February, but this is when the sudden stratospheric warming happens, and we are in a pretty much westerly phase with some higher pressure to our north, but again, nothing too much of it. Low pressure moving in, and then we do go into a more cold phase of weather with Greenland blocking, and you see this air of low pressure move from the north, and we start to pull in these northeasterly winds, and now this does actually produce quite a lot of snow quite widely. And if we head towards the middle part of January, and towards the end of January, we see we do start to pull down these northeasterly uh, before it turns to more northwesterly winds. And you can see the cold air towards Scandinavia and Siberia is much, uh, much larger and much colder. So it does mean that this area is uh, quite a lot colder. And as we head through, you can see a little area of low pressure features. Uh, and where I am, I got sort of about six centimeters of snow from a weather, from an occluded front moving through on that on that Sunday, uh, the 24th of January, and it produced one of the biggest snow events I've had uh, for many years, um, from only three or four hours of very heavy snow, um, simply uh, because of this air of blocking towards Greenland, just pushing these lows a bit further southwards. And you could say this was the first, maybe, hints 
uh, of the sun stratified warming coming through the atmosphere. But again, it's difficult to say, as we as you had seen it through December, we did have amplification in the jet stream, we did have some blocking around. So it's difficult to say whether this was a direct consequence of the sun stratified warming, or, or whether it was just coincidental that this happened two weeks afterwards, um, as I suspect the real effects of the sun stratified warming came in February. But towards the end of January, we did go into a very westerly phase. Um, it did go actually very mild, really, after this colder spell with some quite widespread snow, good three or four days, quite widespread snow, hard frost. And as we ended January, early February, you can see actually quite mild and warm in the south. Um, Tides getting to maybe 9, 10 degrees. Um, colder in Scotland, always. The jet stream is a little bit further south because of the bit of blocking, um, but nothing too substantial. But you can see as we head into early February, we can see this area of high pressure building to our north and this is the start of that very cold spell we saw and you see that blocking to our north and this is uh, a result of that sun stress warming this widespread blocking coming two or three weeks after sun stress warming it's no coincidence um this is the result of the sun stress warming not as bitterly cold and not as uh, impactful as the beast from the east but it, it's a very similar sort of pattern and this uh, this is what real winter is like. You could say over the last few winters, we haven't really seen proper easterly winds. Um, but this is what proper wintry conditions are like. And you can see um, we had uh, we had a storm, a named storm, move through. And as that cleared, we started to pull uh, bitterly cold uh, easterly winds in. Um, for a good three, four, five days, we were under very cold air, that high pressure uh, lingering around, we never really saw a big snowy breakdown as that high pressure sort of stayed over the top of the country uh, and built in with milder air. So we never saw that injection of moisture, which would have brought a major snow event. Um, a few western areas saw some snow, but most areas didn't see. So that, bit, that was a bit of a disappointment for some snow lovers, snow lovers in the west. In the west, we didn't see a lot of snow from the easterly winds, which were not not great for snow. Uh, building up apart from maybe on some eastern coastal areas. As, as as you saw earlier, we did have some very mild air before, which meant the ground was a little bit too um, warm initially for snow settling, so it, it was very difficult to get snow to, to settle initially. But if we have a look at the upper air, so you can just run through, and you can see how we've got some very bitterly cold air to our east, which we didn't have throughout December whenever we saw those sort of easterly or northerly injections. We didn't see all this bitterly cold air. And you can say it's as a result of the sun's stratified warming, pushing it out to, out of the poles. And as we head through, um, you can see bitterly cold air. Minus 13, I think minus 14 isotherm got through. Not as cold as Beast Feast, which did get down to minus 20. But because it was about uh, three weeks earlier in the year, on the surface, the temperatures were similar. Um, it weren't quite as cold, but we did see a record overnight temperatures of minus 23 degrees in Scotland, which was a record-breaking uh, overnight low. Um, but elsewhere, we saw wide, uh, widespread ice days, especially in the east, uh, and quite some quite deep snowfall where we did see uh, the heaviest snow band set up. Beyond that, you can see again, not particularly snowy breakdown, but higher pressure built in with much milder air. And as we go back to the pressure patterns, you can see we finally end winter on a very mild and westerly note. We actually see 15, 16, even 17 degrees in some spots with this very long fetch southwesterly wind. As you can see, the effects of the sun stratification really are sort of diminished now. And we build a big area of high pressure for the start of meteorological spring uh, with some much milder and even warmer conditions getting up to the mid teens, um, even potentially getting to sort of short weather um, and if we have a look at the upper airs you can see still a lot of cold air to our north but you can see we are really pulling up those quite mild and warm southwesterly winds and by the first of March we're in a sort of pretty mild spell cold surface overnight but generally around 9 10 degrees feeling quite warm in the sunshine again you can see some very cold air to our north and this is why if we did see some bitterly cold uh, synoptics at this stage we could still get some very cold conditions but it's not looking like we're going to be seeing any uh, uh, any significant uh, late winter. You know, so there's potential this weekend going a bit colder, um, getting down to maybe average winter levels, but nothing sort of uh, nothing that's going to produce widespread snow. So looking back on that, you can see 
it was very much a teaser winter. We did have some decent cold spells for all those who like snow. We did have some quite sustained westerly spells as well. We didn't have too much uh, dry conditions. This winter actually came out quite wet as well, even though the temperature is going to come around average. It hasn't completely been uh, published yet by the Met Office. It'll probably be another couple of days for the CET to be published. And I'm sure they'll produce some maps uh, and graphs showing uh, exactly where temperature anomalies were. But I suspect it's going to be around maybe a touch above average uh, for this winter uh, in terms of temperatures, simply because we did have some quite potent mild spells, uh, even though generally we did have quite a lot of cold weather this winter compared to at least last year and the year before, where it was very much uh, nothing, um, really, especially last year, which was very, very uh, mild indeed, two or three degrees above average, whereas this winter maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2, maybe 0 0.3 above average, uh, and then many northern areas in Scotland, indeed, will probably be around or below average. So it's been uh, a fairly, you know, a decent winter for those who enjoy um, milder weather. You've certainly seen that for those, for those snow lovers. We did certainly see some snow, maybe not as much snow as it could have been uh, if we did have uh, the stars aligned a little bit better. And for those who enjoy dry weather, we're getting the dry weather now into spring. So it has been a winter really for all uh, sort of weather lovers out there. I must say it has been quite wet though. That was the only one thing. Uh, we have had quite wet conditions over the, over the winter. While, whether it was mild or uh, cold, we did see a lot of precipitation around since winter is going to become uh, quite uh, above average for precipitation. But it's looking like March is going to be a bit drier, at least for the first half, before there's hints the uh, jet stream could power up for the end of March, bringing quite a stormy spell of weather. So keep updated for that uh, for my videos in the next few days, as I'll be having a look at the next uh, couple of weeks uh, for the weather. But anyway, thanks for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed uh, the winter. Um, I certainly did uh, did enjoy it. It was a bit of a change from last winter, where it very much was a westerly uh, based winter. And for any potential snow, it's very much looking sort of 10, 14 days on the ensembles, hoping that those sporadic uh, and outliers uh, where it got down to snow levels, um, uh, where all showing snow potential came off, never really did. But I'm pleased that this winter did kind of deliver um and, and all, all sort of weather lovers out there whatever weather type you do like you did get a hint of that uh, at least this winter so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe and i'll see you again for another video soon